Hi everybody, this is Bastian and today we're going to take a look at the bullfrog gambit, sometimes called the Gibbons gambit. So the bullfrog starts out with um, d4, so we're seeing a queen pawn's opening. Knight to f6, and then the bullfrog gambit is g4, sacrificing this pawn. So this looks like very incoherent play. Black can immediately take the pawn and it doesn't look like there's an immediate compensation for white. So what's the point of the opening? So if you compare the bullfrog gambit with uh, the king's gambit, for instance, we, said the, we can see the idea more clearly. f4 is the king's gambit, and black is sacrificing a flanking pawn, let's say king's gambit accepted, to take control of the center and to immediately counterattack the overextended pawn on f4. So if you go back to the bullfrog gambit, d4, knight to f6, we can see some of the same concepts involved, g4, black takes the free pawn, and now e4, so white has control of the center, and is immediately counterattacking on the knight on g4. One big difference is that with the king's gambit, uh, black doesn't have to try and defend the pawn, but with the bullfrog gamut, it's not so easy because the knight is too valuable and will need to be protected. So, black tries d5, also gaining control of the center and immediately adding protection to the knight. And e5, and we can already see that this knight has no safe squares left. Black tries f6, hoping to take, exchange, and gain a free square for the knight. But we're not going to allow that. Immediately we play h3, continuing our attack on the knight. Knight retreats to h6, bishop takes, and pawn recaptures. So now I'm still down a pawn, but we can see that black's king is still stuck in the center and there are two diagonals being opened and that's a recurring theme with the bullfrog so we might see that once or twice queen h5 check immediately taking advantage of the open diagonals king goes to d7 c4 so we're seeing a queen gambit type of structure now from white of course, black doesn't want to lose the pawn, or I can even play c5 in some cases. So, pawn takes pawn, I develop the bishop, bishop takes uh, c4, queen e8. A queen e8 has two purposes, it creates an escape for the king in case of uh, an e6 move. Also, it hopes to exchange queens. But white, uh, black overlooked. Uh, bishop f7, chasing back the queen and gaining tempo, so now the queen has to retreat to uh, d8, and now it's all over, e6 check, king c6, and then simply queen c5 mate. So this was the first uh, game using the bullfrog gambit. Second game against the same player. D4, knight f6, g4. Again, black accepts the bullfrog. E4, attacking the knight. D5, the same defense. And now I continue with another attacking idea. I play bishop to e2. So the knight is protected on g4, but I have created a battery on the knight. However, the knight can still escape to f6 because e5 isn't played yet. Knight to f6, now e5, and again the knight must retreat. And there are two options. At um, d7, 
the bishop is blocked, but the knight has a supporting role for a c5 pawn break. Perhaps even uh, remaneuvering to a um, b6. So that's definitely one option, but black chooses an undeveloping move and plays knight to g8. So I continue just like the first game with the queen's gamut type structure, c4. And black doesn't exchange, but plays a Slav defense, c6, knight to c3, and bishop to e6. So knight to c3 adds uh, more pressure to the pawn on d5. Black adds a third defender, but instead of completing typical semi-Slav, development with pawn to um, e6, he plays bishop to e6 instead, which is um, still playable. I play queen to b3, move which has two purposes, add another attacker on the pawn on d5, also attacking the unprotected pawn on b7. So black needs to waste one tempo and play b6 or another move to protect the pawn. And now I'd like to add um, another attacker on this pawn on d5 and I can't really play bishop to f3 because the bishop is needed to protect the c4 pawn. If pawn takes pawn my queen is under attack no longer protected by the bishop and even worse, this pawn is uh, protected by the knight. So bishop to f3 to add another uh, attacker clearly doesn't work. I can bring one other piece in, that's the knight. Knight goes to f3. So I can redevelop in order to add another attacker on d5, but just that just takes way too much time. More logical is to play knight to g5 and to remove one defender. And then gain a pawn on d5. So black spots the threat of knight to g5. Plays h6. Now I have no way to continue to gain a free pawn on d5. So I just trade off. Pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn, attacking the queen. Knight takes, knight takes bishop, queen takes uh, knight, queen takes queen, and pawn takes queen. But I'm still down a pawn, and normally when we play a gambit and sacrifice a pawn, we would like to keep all our pieces into the attack, otherwise we will get to an endgame just with a pawn down, a little chance of winning. So in exchanging all this material, I still need a clear attacking idea and I still have an edge on the board and that's this pawn on e5. Also notice the king is still stuck in the center and we have one diagonal open. As said before, a recurring theme is to open the two diagonals. e6 and this will remove the pawn from f7. Either pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, or even pawn to f6, the second diagonal will become open. Also, this pawn move vacates the e5 square for the knight to develop to. So the pawn move in a way uh, makes this bishop more powerful and this knight as well. Let's see what the options are. If black plays a random move like a5, I can play bishop check, king d8, knight d5. So I'm threatening a fork because the king has been kicked off of the defense by the bishop. 
King C8 to uh, get out of the fork. Knight takes pawn, threatening the rook. Rook H7, and then Bishop to F4 um, limits the king even more, and we have Rook to uh, C1 coming up. And if Black tries his best play, let's say Knight to A6, then Rook check King B7. And if nothing else, bishop to c6 will gain a free rook. So that's clearly losing for black. If instead of a5 we ran a move, black plays knight to uh, c6, which is not random because it blocks the diagonal, we can continue with bishop to b5, pressuring the knight. And this king can't step in to the defense because of the pawn guarding the d7 square. Rook c8 to cover um, the uh, knight. And now knight to e5 will simply overload the knight and black will be down a piece. So defending against the check doesn't work. If instead black tries to uh, pass the pawn, that's also possible with f6. We can see that we have succeeded in creating two open diagonals. And white can continue with knight to h4. Now knight to e5 is no longer possible because of the protection of the pawn. But knight to h4 still opens up the diagonal and allows either knight to f7 or knight to g6. So now White's attacking idea is very simple. Knight to h5. You'll kick away the knight. Then simply a fork between the bishop and uh, the rook will gain one piece. So if king to d8, simply a fork. Black is lost. So passing the pawn doesn't work. Finally, if the pawn were to be captured, pawn takes pawn, which is the best move and which was played. White can continue his attack with the knight to e5 move. So the knight replaces the function of the pawn in guarding uh, the d7 and f7 squares. Both diagonals are open. Black tries a6 to cover one. But we can simply use the other bishop to h5 check. Now, if king d8, again we get the fork. That doesn't work. g6 was played. Bishop takes pawn check. Forcing the king into the fork. and black resigns. So that's the second game uh, using the bullfrog. In this final game against the same player d4 knight f6 g4 we can see another approach from black. Black now plays h6 so we're seeing the bullfrog gamut declined. h6 is played, so all tactics with bishop to g5 or even uh, pawn to g5 will become compromised. But g5 was played anyways because if pawn takes pawn, we get um, bishop takes, recapturing the pawn. Or in between move knight to c3, covering the escapes for the knight, and then bishop takes pawn on g5 because this pawn is impossible to protect. So black declines to take the pawn, and the knight chase continues, knight to d5. Again, I continue pawn development to attack the knight, e4. 
knight to um, b6, a4, threatening a5, a5 to block the pawn advance, c4, threatening c5, d6 to prevent the pawn advance, knight to c3, c5, and after c5 I decide to take the pawn on h6. So why after c5 and not sooner or later? If uh, at this point black recaptures pawn takes pawn on the h file, I can get pawn takes pawn, that's now possible, threatening the knight. And if pawn recaptures, queen takes queen and king takes queen. So black has lost castling privileges. If black decides to recapture on the h file, which leads for a winning game for white. If at this point, however, um, pawn takes pawn on the d file, so not the h file, which was played. I continue with queen takes pawn and now you can see I've gained a pawn and this pawn can be recaptured because of the discovered attack on the rook. So that's why pawn takes pawn on the h file was played now. Black tries e5 gaining tempo on the queen and blocking the discovered attack on the rook. But now I can play pawn takes pawn, threatening promotion. So if pawn takes queen at this point, I can win an exchange. Pawn takes rook, promoting to a queen, gaining a rook, losing a knight, and regaining the pawn on c3. So I'm up an exchange. Of course this wasn't played. Black tries bishop takes pawn, renewing the threat. Now retreat the queen to um, d1, being up a pawn. Play continues, with queen to um, f6. Black still needs to protect the pawn because of queen takes pawn. Also, notice we are having nice outposts for the knight on b5 and in some cases uh, d5, but that's still being covered for uh, the moment. h4. h4 meant to develop bishop to um, g6, which will kick um, the queen off of the diagonal. However, this pawn has become overloaded. There are two pieces attacking it. But if black chooses to take the pawn, which he does, rook takes pawn, rook takes rook, queen takes, we can see there's no longer any protection on this pawn on d6. So now we can play queen takes pawn on d6. However, I play an in-between move, a very dangerous one, knight to b5, threatening a fork first. And this is very difficult to defend against. If say king to d8 to protect c7 and get out of the fork. Then queen takes pawn check, king e8, uh, knight to c7, um, gets a fork, a check and a mate. So that's definitely losing for black. If instead King to d7 to um, cover and protect. The queen can simply crush through. Queen check, king e8, and again knight to c7 mate. So, does it look like black has a defense for it? Black tries king to f8 to escape the fork. But, 
Now Queen takes pawn, creates a second fork. King to g8, Queen takes knight. Queen does get a pawn with check, but after bishop to e3 to block, black is left with nothing and the piece down. And black plays on for one more move and then resigns uh, because of the loss of uh, material. So those were my uh, three games using the move for gambit. Uh, an excellent choice at the uh, club level play, which leads to uh, interesting and fun uh, chess matches. So I hope you enjoyed these videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. And please leave a comment on YouTube.